Offering only the finest in PC enthusiast apparel. Awesome Sauce shirts are not only threaded, they're hyper-threaded and come factory overclothed. Get yours today at the Awesome Sauce store. And we're live! Welcome back to Awesome Hardware, guys. This is part two that you're watching on my channel. Uh, if you're watching the YouTube rebroadcast, go ahead and check out part A on Paul's channel, Paul's part Hardware. Part two of 22. Part, part one, part one on Paul's channel. Because there's lots of twos. It's, just, it's oh. part two of episode 22. Part two of episode, wow. Anyway. Triple twos. We win. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for uh, staying tuned. If you're joining us in chat, welcome back. And um, yeah, we've got a nice second half of the show. The first half went really well. It Paul, did. Paul's about to open up his third beer. I'm drinking my third beer. Third or fourth? Uh, I can't remember. I don't know, sorry, it's all a blur. Hanger, it's a blur. Hanger, Hanger 24 orange wheat, in case you're wondering. This I, is uh, Sierra I, Nevada I, Nooner Pilsner. I, I burned the Corona. It's like, okay. You burned it? I burned it. It's still back there. I know. It's open. Yeah, I had a, you know, in between Why? pisses. I, I like to Why would chug Corona. It's, it's, a, it's a guilty, I can, I guilty pleasure. I can smell it. It's burning my... <laughs> It's burning my retinas. Burning your retinas and nostrils. Um, so, first off, guys, announcements. Uh, buy some merch from Paul or I. Support your love for Paul's Hardware or Awesome Sauce Network. We are both selling some premium quality shirts. We both go through the same vendor. Really high quality stuff. Super soft. Just wanna, you just want to touch it. Uh, people, touch and feel people, it all day. People walk up and touch me all the so time. So, I just restocked my CPU cooler shirt. So, if you weren't able to get those earlier, you can get them now. For a limited time, I, I no, probably not. I'm not going to say limited time. Until they sell out again. Until they sell out again. Um, they've been selling really quick, so go ahead and pick one up if you haven't already. Also, if you buy one during this stream, you will get a personal Johnson shout-out. I, I, I didn't do that justice. You will get a personal Johnson, Johnson. shout-out from me on stream. I will say your freaking name. Not your, <laughs> not your whole name. Not your whole that'll, name. That'll be wrong. <laughs> that'll be very wrong of me. But Paul will also be doing the same thing. He's got a lot of I new will. shirts, uh, new merchandise on his site as well, paulshardware.net. He's got some uh, new thumb screw. He's got a new thumb screw logo, new as shirts. you can see right here, Exhibit A. He will also be giving personal Johnson shout-outs to anyone who picks up one of those as well. And then, the, and then there's glassware, too. And there's glassware as well. You get a Johnson for either of those, so buy some shit. Guys, <laughs> god damn it, buy some shit. Um, but let's just jump right into it. Uh, let's let's uh, continue off where Paul left off uh, on tech news. Uh, tech the first news. thing I want to mention is AMD. Uh, wrong <laughs> People got a black screen there for oh, just no. a second. Oh no! Oh no! It was only for a second. Though. We're here. We're here. We're, we're still recovered. we're still connected. Uh, so AMD is rumored to uh, be sporting the next chip or be providing the next chip for the upcoming Nintendo NX console. Now, obviously, we're all very grieved to hear of uh, uh, Satoru Iwata's passing, uh, the president of Nintendo that just happened a couple weeks ago, a week or two ago. Um, but that doesn't mean the company itself is going to stop anytime soon. The Nintendo NX is coming relatively soon, probably within a year or so. And up until now, they really haven't had a, a flagship AMD chip in their consoles with the Wii or the Wii U. Um, but we might be seeing the first ever AMD chip in a Nintendo console with the NX. That's exciting. Um, that is very exciting because you can <laughs> expect probably similar on par performance and and uh, graphics as we've seen on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but with a Nintendo console. And this is exciting to me because I feel like if they're improving their, their graphics that much more with, with an AMD chip, then maybe we'll see some more <laughs> flagship, more competitive games uh, on, on this, this console from Nintendo. So stuff like first yeah. person shooters, or, I mean, imagine playing, like, the, the next Zelda IP, uh, the next Zelda title with, with like, really great graphics, um, which is really exciting. And uh, this basically is all rumored right now, so don't take take, take a lot of it with a grain of salt. Um, AMD's Dr. Lisa Su, the, uh, the CEO and stuff, has said that uh, their third semi-custom contract that AMD has won recently uh, could generate billions of dollars for the company in sales. Uh, and that just adds, it feels fire to the rumors that, uh, well, well, what kind of contract are they talking about here and there's even been more um information to kind of feel this rumor uh, because in december remember amd announced that their upcoming design would power a device beyond gaming quote unquote uh, beyond gaming beyond gaming so i, I don't know if, it, if that's a little bit of embellishment there but could it be <clears throat> hinting at a next generation console and uh, like what does beyond gaming mean like what it's it's a very amd like type watching term watching movies is <laughs> like <laughs> Word processing, beyond gaming, yeah, like, I... Excel spreadsheets, beyond gaming. 
Uh, but obviously that wasn't you know the vein that they were trying to. It doesn't to matter stick how you dress in. it up; it's still gaming to me. It's like, still gaming. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess they're what they're trying to say in a very short phrase is it's going to be the next level of gaming, right? So better graphics, whatever, better games, better titles. Uh, that I, I don't know that are hopefully in line with what we've been seeing with PS4 and Xbox One, because <clears throat> I would really like to see personally. I'd like to see Nintendo revert back to uh, revert back to. Uh, the, the competitive days when they were actually pumping out some, um, I don't know. I, I don't want to say, like, <clears throat> less family-oriented games, because I think that's great. I think that a lot of yeah. families benefit from playing video games in the house, and I think Wii U, for example, is a great uh, option for that. But I would also like to see them expand their demographic and try start catering to more competitive gamers uh, that, you know, like things like first-person shooters or um, more... M-rated titles. I know it's 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 kind of silly to say like oh it should be M-rated, but a lot of the competitive games that we all know and love and play religiously are M-rated. Um, that is true, but I mean, and I think beyond even like the the content of the game, I, I think Nintendo has done a really good job focusing on like gameplay <clears throat> and making games fun with like the, the their Wii consoles and that kind of thing, and they they haven't been at the forefront of graphics in quite some time. Yes, so exactly. I think as long as as long as they can maintain that focus on like gameplay, fun games, engaging stories, um, and, and that kind of thing, and then also include the graphics, I think that will be a win for everyone. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, so that's really exciting news. Um, <coughs> uh, good things to hopefully look forward to with Nintendo. Also, in this article that I was looking up, they briefly mentioned the R9 Fury Nano from AMD as well. That is still yet to be released. It's the last flagship type card uh, from Team Red that has yet to hit the market. Um, and back at E3, when they first announced it, they said that it was going to be releasing sometime in August, which isn't too far away. So if you're looking for a small form factor powerhouse of a card, um, this might be the card for you. Uh, and, mm. and when I say small form factor, it really is. It's like a six-inch card. I mean, this thing is tiny. but it brief, brief interjection here. Okay. Most of chat says we're not streaming. Okay, welcome back. Sorry for that little hiccup. Uh, let's just move right on to the next uh, story in this now segment have, of Tech News. Now we have two viewers. <laughs> now we only have two viewers. You guys need to make up your minds. You're all... Everyone keeps... Apparently, we should not get happy when we have lots of viewers, because everyone just leaves. I was like, oh, screw these guys. They have way too many viewers. We just need to leave. In five seconds, we'll have a thousand. It's going to jump back up. Just wait for it. it just keeps... Up and down. Either way, the show must go on. So uh, the next <laughs> article that I'm talking about is uh, some leaked photos, not leaked photos, but some photos of the um, upcoming Z170 boards that oh, we're yeah. all so excited about, uh, specifically from MSI. Guys at MSI have released their M-Series motherboard photos. Why is this downloading? Um, they're all supporting DDR4. Why is uh, this downloading? <laughs> what? I don't know. I've downloaded the picture instead of opening. This is an evil website. Whatever. What is this? Guru 3D, stop Guru it. 3D. Stop automatically saving things to my computer. Here, I'll do that. that Streambox works. can't handle it. At any rate, these uh, motherboards look pretty sexy um, based on the photos. Um, if, you, if you're starting at the low-end base model, the M5, it's a, it's a Z170A gaming M5 motherboard. Uh, it's the lowest end model that you can get. It's got support for up to two GPUs. Uh, it's got 10 phase CPU VRM, 10 SATA ports, two of which are SATA Express, 16 gigabit per second. Uh, you also get two M.2 slots. I haven't seen too many motherboards with, with multiple M.2 I slots. I like two M.2 slots. Oh, they're both 32 gigabit per they're second? They're both 32 okay. gigabit per second, one which thing is solid. I wanna, I, one thing, with whenever, whenever it says two M.2 slots, I'm always like, yeah, but what key are they? Because if they're the key for SSDs, then that's good. But they can also be like the E key, which right. there are no SSDs for. Those are for like wireless cards and stuff. Right, so, yeah. right. And also um, like how many PCIe lanes are they are taking away from? Yeah, how much uh, the slots and whatnot? Wait, are they are they shared or do they have dedicated lanes? Is the other question. We don't know yet. Uh, it's also going to feature Audio Boost Three Audio, which is MSI's special audio shit. Uh, they got Killer E two two zero five gigabit Ethernet LAN which is sweet. That's just on the M5 model, and obviously the M7 and M9 will have all of that or better okay. uh, because they're the mid and high tier options. Uh, so just really briefly going over, the M7, which is their mid tier, is a 14 phase CPU VRM, so you get a nice little bump there. Uh, you also get Game Boost Rotary Button. It's a button that steps up the CPU and memory 
uh, clocks in, in 11 preset steps, which okay. uh, I'd like to see more information about that. They, they don't really allude to, to too much more on the article. And also improved onboard audio, so you probably get another step up um, from, the, uh, from the Audio Boost 3. And finally, in M9, their, their highest end model, you get uh, backplates a la Sabretooth. It's very Sabretooth esque. It's very Sabretooth from, from Asus. Super. I mean, yeah. like, like their thermal armor um, or their uh, fortifier, their, their yeah. Asus fortifier. I'm, all, I'm always so torn Tough when, fortifier. When, when the Asus stuff starts to like percolate down into the other manufacturers. I know. Yeah. Because on the one hand, I'm like, man, that was kind of an Asus thing. They kind of pioneered that. On and the other hand, I'm like, yeah, but it's kind of cool kinda to cool. have the, the trace lighting <laughs> yeah. available on a bunch of different motherboards and right. other colors. Like, you can't get a motherboard with a backplate like this unless you get a Tough Series motherboard. Yeah, or yeah. Just a little power thing there. And yeah. and Tough Series motherboards have a very particular color scheme. You've been dealing with that yourself just yes. recently with your build. Yes. And so maybe somebody wanted a red and black version of that, and Asus doesn't make that one, so now MSI has filled that gap. So at least it's not like the MSI... Super tough and durable. <laughs> you know, but, but I mean, that's pretty much what they've done here. Is they've yeah. gone ROG aesthetics mm -hmm. with like the tough, some of those tough features, tough saber tooth type even got, features. They've even got like like a the water like, cooling the, form, the water cooling for the VRM uh, on the VRM. So that's kind of like yes. a formula series. Or Azrock has done that. I don't think I've seen MSI do that. Have they, do they have one? No, I don't I've think no, they have I've one. I've never seen it. Um, they've also got with with the seven and the nine. They have a nice little cover on the IO, um, which which looks pretty slick. And it looks like you get three. Uh, yeah. PCIe slots for high-end GPUs. Okay, there. so up to three-way with that one, and then yeah. I'm sure they're going to have a. What is it they do? Their their yellow series, the M series, at least in past power, generations. The M power, the M power, or, right? Um, from MSI is usually where they go super high-end for like overclocking four-way GPU configurations. Yeah, and more overclocking and everything. Yeah, but cool. Uh, keep your eyes on that. Uh, we're probably going to see a lot of those types of uh, Z170 boards roll out in the very near future with Skylake on the rise and all. Um, moving on though, uh, oh, you're tweeting. That's okay. Yes, you're completely I'm excused. To, I'm trying to promote your half of the show, Pat. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the uh, the next story is about the the Feds investigating. It's about the Feds. It's about the Feds investigating a teenager who made a weaponized quadricopter, and we kind of alluded to this a bit in Paul's half of the segment. We did. We totally uh, the did. show. Um, when he was talking about drones and stuff and how they were intruding on a firefighting operation, uh, which, which was happening. So there was a 14-second YouTube video that was online, obviously. Uh, That's it. I'll play it again. Of a quadricopter firing a handgun. <laughs> I mean, this just is ridiculous and, and kind of terrifying and cool at the same time. It's a lot of different things. It makes you feel weird emotions. Um, and you don't really know how to react. And neither does the FFA, for that matter. The, FA, the FAA, I should say. Um, they're still trying to decide whether or not this type of thing is illegal. To have a firearm or a weaponized version of, a, of an unmanned aircraft, uh, you know, publicly available. Um, apparently, this thing was made by an 18-year-old an engineering student in Connecticut. Some 18-year-old kid made this. Um, and according to the Connecticut police, the local police, they're saying that there were no real laws broken here. There's nothing in their book. Okay, I mean, as far as, as local if, if goes, the gun, if the gun is legal and registered, and he's right. not flying it in an area that's public or off limits, and and he, and he didn't shoot and kill anyone. Well, obviously <laughs> yes, but I think uh, it's just a matter of the fact that it exists. Is that okay um, to have this flying drone that can fire a gun with the with the click of a remote or whatever? Um, as long as as long as the drone doesn't become self-aware like Skynet and start shooting innocent civilians uh, in Connecticut, I think we're okay. But so this self-aware drones is actually Google's follow-up project after they get the uh, automated cars, <laughs> the self-driving cars on the right. road. You gonna have. I mean, well, I mean, hyper intelligent after after learning killer drones. I mean, after driverless cars becomes a, a normal thing. I mean, we're gonna start to see like Mad Max cars with like spikes on the sides and just it's gonna be like battle bots on the five freeway. Naturally, that is the natural. It's condition. gonna be insane. So I don't know. This is a good question. What do you guys think about this type of thing? Do you think, like from the video that we just saw, do you think that sort of thing is legal? Do you think it should be allowed and and or should it be prohibited? Um, I'm kind of torn on the fence. Honestly, I still have not that thought about painful. it enough. 
<laughs> torn on the torn fence. Torn on the fence. I tried to I tried to jump it, but then I got torn on the fence. Ow! You just pick a side already, uh, man. Um, you know it's in the crotch. That's the only way. Of course, place. it's not getting anywhere else. Yeah. Targeted. Um, but yeah, kind of kind of interesting. But that's pretty much all I have for that segment. On on the crotch tearing uh, note, I think we'll move on to my next segment, which is a new one also. Oh, new segment. It's called. That's just wrong. It's a new segment for me. Which I have totally and myself. up here. Wait. Come on, I made a special thumbnail just for this. I know. It. There it is. I got Picard yeah. in there. Come on. I like I like that picture of Picard. Me too. It's a classic one. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, so obviously this segment is uh, mainly focused on articles or stories that after you read them, you're just like, that's just wrong. That is, <laughs> that is just wrong. There's nothing else to say there. Uh, so the first one in this segment is about an Instagram user who had his account name and username uh, given to a stolen away from him and given to a famous footballer or a football player uh, not the traditional football. American footballer but the uh, Spain Spaniard the, foot, the, football the, rest the of original the, world, the foot yes foot. It's, yes. Foot, it's football in America. It's, it's American football. 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 With a slight uh, Latin accent. If That's you right. Can manage it. So, Andres Iniesta, who's Iniesta. a father who Iniesta. enjoyed sharing pictures of his kids and his food that he would eat uh, with his family and stuff, he noticed that his account had been deactivated on Instagram. Um, he had about 800 followers or so, uh, which isn't too many but it's still a sizable amount and he's probably got a lot of sentimental pictures on there that he's taken over the years or whatever he lives in madrid he lives in madrid sweet uh and then he found out a few days later from a friend of his that was like hey uh i saw your username i got a post or whatever but it wasn't from you it was actually from this famous footballer um from spain with the same name andres as you iniesta andres iniesta another andres iniesta who's a famous footballer who he's has really given a, a, a dgaf look right there i think that's doesn't a, give a shit this was his reaction for saying how do you feel about stealing this man's instagram account name well, i give him no shit I, <laughs> I, I, I play the football i have five million followers <laughs> he does have like, five million followers so of course he doesn't give a shit it's a terrible accent i feel like that was maybe a little russian yeah i do not know the instagram <laughs> has the five million followers on the football that's uh, terrible. See, in, in Southern California, Why? we don't do Spanish accents. We do, like, Mexican accents. Iniesta. But that doesn't do it justice. They're completely different. Iniesta. At I any rate, that's... 800 followers, the original Iniesta. 5 million followers, this famous football player. Again, Russian. I don't know why. Um, so, <laughs> after, after he found out that he had had his account stolen from him, he made a blog post about it that went semi-viral, and then Instagram got caught hold of it, caught wind of it, and uh, apologized and gave it back to him, thankfully. Mm -hmm. So, that was nice. Oh, they, so they returned it. They returned it. I didn't it. catch that part. Okay. They did return it, yeah. So, well, that's just right. So, did the football player, like ask instagram for that account like how did like what started the whole thing there, there it was not specified okay it was not was not I specified but um there's there's been another recent issue uh in the last month or so with this fit popular youtuber his name is matthew lush uh i don't think either of i or either of us would have been following him he's, he's this blogger little, little he, lush. he does very like pop culture type things mm -hmm. um he's got about one million subscribers uh but he's had his channel name that was simply Lush, uh, since 2005, 2006, okay. and it was recently stripped of him just a month ago and what? given to a beauty product line called Lush Cosmetics. Ah. Um, and when Google was asked, they, they claimed that it was an algorithm that had actually taken this name from this one popular YouTuber and given it to this company. Really? Yes. Um, and this happened about a month ago, but I couldn't find anything on whether or not it had been resolved if this blogger from YouTube had gotten his name back. I'd be super or, pissed. Right? I would be... That's, that's what caught my eye. I was like, this so would piss pissed. me off. Um, Especially if you've been doing it since 2005. That's when YouTube started. Yes, exactly. And you have, like, a four-letter name, Lush. And you have a huge following, too. And you have a huge... Like, over a million subs? Like, oh, right. uh, yeah. Well, in that case, maybe it was an algorithm, because if it was a person doing that, I feel like they would have... At Some least common the sense. thoughts would be like, hey, he's got a million subs, this might not oh, yeah. go over well. I agree that um, it was probably an algorithm too, yeah, but I mean, yeah. what kind of algorithm are you <laughs> to, to not yeah. pick up on those keys and or how, like maybe notify someone first before you make that switch? And how reliant is YouTube on automation then if they're 
if they've actually got like, like, can happen. like account reassignment or like URL or, or base like YouTube name of reassignments yes. being handled by an algorithm, that seems more. Yeah. Eh, it's, I don't know. Yeah. So I don't. That's just wrong. I agree. That's what I have to say. Is that's just wrong. So hopefully, um, whoever this Matt Lush guy is, he got his name back. I hope so. I too. mean, yeah. So good luck with that. We're pulling for you, Maddie. Right. So also, also on uh, that's just wrong. Or it could be Illuminati. Or Illuminati. <laughs> that's in there. Uh, we've got another story here about um, things that are just wrong, uh, and that's about Apple charging a ridiculous thirty percent. How does that company even exist? I agree, Kyle. Apple uh, yeah. is wrong. Let's let's overthrow just, them tonight. Just, <laughs> we should make a law about that. Death. An Apple law. <laughs> Just to all iOS users. Um, so Apple's <laughs> charging an insane... That's like half the world. Um, <laughs> genocide. It's not that many people. Apple right? genocide. It's a lot of people. We're all better without them. Right. Um, so Apple's charging a 30% App Store tax oh, on weird. on music subscription services. Uh, and, and just to simplify, because this can get kind of convoluted, I'm going to simplify by saying what this, who this really affects, who this uh, Apple rule really affects is... Um, services like Spotify. That's probably the biggest known one okay. that is being affected by Apple's ridiculous rules in their app store. So I'm just going to put everything in terms of how this affects Spotify. Okay. Uh, to make it easy on you guys. So first off, um, Apple's targeting these subscription services who sign up their new users through iOS uh, this 30% tax. So let me put it this way. You can go to um, you can go on your desktop and go to Spotify.com and you can get their subscription service for for 9.99 a month. Okay. But if I'm a, a mobile user and I don't really have a desktop or whatever and I try to sign up for Spotify through my iOS app for, through the App Store on Spotify. If I go to the Spotify app on my iPhone, yeah. and I try to sign up for a monthly subscription, I get I personally get taxed 30% more per month because I went through the iOS App Store. So well, instead of 9.99, I'm paying 12.99. Do you think that kind of for the same convenience service. comes for free? I mean, they had to program... Oh, you're going you're to sword to, fight they this? They had to program another UI, another interface there. Oh, okay. For the... If, you, if you're going to be a dickwad about this, no, I mean, just go it. ahead and... Why don't, why don't you Apple us all to death? <laughs> that would be painful. Why don't I have Samsung sue you? Oh, wait, they already are. What? I can't do that anymore. Oh, yeah, is that, were you talking about that one, too? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> completely unrelated. But so 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 there are certain rules that Apple has implemented into their terms of service with the App Store mm-hmm. that directly affect subscription services like Spotify. So I've kind of broken it down really nice and simple for you guys. Things that Spotify can't do yes. with under Apple's new rules. And remember, Apple has just rolled out their new um, music service, uh, Apple Music. Hmm. Okay. So they're trying to kill the competition, evidently. Um, but here are things that Spotify can't do under the new uh, Apple App Store rules. Okay. Spotify cannot charge users the regular price that they charge everyone else. So, like I said, if you're if you're buying Spotify through iOS, you oh. you are charged 30% more. Okay. So as an incentive for people to use Apple Music when there is no tax. It's 13 bucks instead of 10 bucks. Exactly. Okay. No, that seems anti-competitive. It's very anti-competitive, and that's uh, w- we're going to get to that. And the other thing that Spotify can't do is they can't even point users to an external link or an external website where they can get the deal for cheaper. So nowhere on iOS can Spotify go in and say, hey, guys, I know this is really screwed up of Apple to do, but go to our website link and, and, and get it, it for nine ninety nine a month. Uh. They can't do that. That's prohibited in the Apple rules as well. Apple's really thought this through. Very Kudos to you guys, you dicks. And they um, put a lot of thought into screwing people over. They really do. Uh, it even says in, this, uh, in, in their terms of service, in the App Store terms of service, apps that link to external mechanisms for purchases or subscriptions to be used in the app such as buy, such as a buy button that goes to a web, website to purchase a digital book will be rejected. And Apple has also done this with uh, ebooks. That's mm-hmm. why Amazon doesn't even offer uh, selling ebooks through their, uh, their App Store app yeah. because they are, th- their rates are so inflated that they'd rather not even, they'd rather not even have um, like really like, uh, inflated rates over the Apple iBook store or yeah. whatever. They don't want to like, appear as like they're more expensive. So they just don't sell them at all. So it's like they are like killing the competition in a way. The other thing that um, Spotify can't do is they can't even offer uh, free promo 
incentives to their to, to any iOS user. So even though Apple is currently offering a free three month trial for Apple Music, sp- companies like Spotify or Rhapsody can't do the same thing. Hmm. I mean, that's so, just wrong. So like it seems to me like, I mean, Apple's had their walled garden with the with iOS and their app store for for quite some time but now like they want to create some cages in that walled garden so that even like apps that have gotten in and were okay before now they can go and shove them in the cage yes because Apple has a competing uh, service or something like that yes which which is wrong Uh, I it's pretty extreme I mean I often say this because people ask me all the time like oh you must hate Apple or you must hate you know iOS or whatever, and I don't I don't use them, but I try for the most part. If people ask me about them, to be like, look, I, if people use them and and it does for them what they want it to do, and they they can get through the day with it, and it helps them in their you know organization or whatever, then 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 use it. That's fine. Sure. It's just not for me. Um, but stuff like this is where I, I I it starts. It is where I get more like yeah, and then they do stupid stuff as well on top of it that makes me from a principle just just based on principle alone makes me want to have nothing to do with it yeah and that's what this is it's anti-competitive and i'm not surprised at all that, that there's a federal investigation going on so that that's ongoing or is it, did that like just start this as far as them looking at this this has been going on for for a short while i mean okay. the 30 percent tax was introduced uh not too long ago i mean it wasn't like today or whatever it was a little bit earlier mm-hmm. but now the FTC is investigating okay. because they're trying to see like is this anti-competitive? It is. I I completely agree, yeah. um, but obviously like, there's a whole process that needs to happen. I don't know this. Maybe this isn't a good comparison, but it jumps into my 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 mind. Like, what if genocide? What if no? Oh. Too much death already <laughs> in today's episode. Uh, Never enough. What if one of the major car companies owned like the roads? I mean that, that's, yeah. that's kind of what it like. Like, what if what if uh, what or if, if you had to pay if, extra to yeah, ride on if, certain? What if GM owned the roads, and like, hey, if you own a, if you own a GM vehicle, then you can drive down this road no problem for free. If you have a different vehicle, you got to pay tax every time. Yeah. Like that's that's the type of activity that this is. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, in my mind, a competitive marketplace means I create a product or whatever company creates a product, and they say we made a good product. It doesn't matter what other competition is out there because our product is good and it right. will stand up to the competition. Right. If that's the case, then who cares if people have access to the competition because yeah. they'll try both and they'll be like, this one's better. Or right. word of mouth will spread or something like that. Yeah. But this type of activity is just, it's, it doesn't follow that, 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 that process at all. And yeah, um, yeah I, I, hope the, uh, I hope they get slapped with some fines or something like that. I, I certainly agree. Uh, but uh, that's pretty much it for That's Just Wrong. Guys, let us know in chat if you enjoy this segment. Um, I always think it's cool because it's just always so fascinating how, how screwed up certain companies can be at times uh, or how s- certain things can just be ridiculous. They can be pretty screwed up. They can be pretty screwed up. But let's move on to something a little bit more cheery. With okay. uh, a good old... Johnson! Good old... Oh! Johnson it! Johnson. Who we got? Who I'm we got? I was checking my Johnson's. So nice. I gotta say shout out to Zach. Good old Zach. Hey Zach, thanks for the order, man. Zach Attack. Appreciate you uh, stopping by. I hope you. I don't. I want to see what you ordered. <laughs> he ordered ten uh, million. Oh, he just he just got the English pub glass. Nice. Actually, Zach might have been in chat a minute ago. Uh, I might have seen a Zach in here. It might have been the same Zach who was in chat saying he was trying to, to place an order, and wasn't able to. But I'm glad that went through. Nice, Zach. Our our team of uh, Oompa Loompas will be uh, shipping that out to you momentarily. Oompa Loom. Oh. Cheers to you, thanks for ordering, and uh, I'm going to drink this beer. Drink it. Drink it now. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate that, buddy. Um, so let's move on to Pete. Pete, Pete. Johnson. Sorry, I forgot I was giving double Johnsons this time. <laughs> I'm, I promise double Johnsons. Okay. Double Johnson. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of surprising. You know. <laughs> the, the double Johnson is very unexpected. The double Johnson comes when you least expect it. I have to get used to it. Um, our first Pin My PC, which is the... the oh, it's uh, Pin My PC. It's Pin My PC, I come on. I didn't even know you had said that. Thumbnail, yet. Paul, thumbnail. I'm working on it. Let's get on it. Wait. No. I got to scroll that's down. That's not it. That's, that's you didn't plan this at all. That. There we go, Pin My PC. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you acting like you didn't know that this was how it was going to be? We discussed this. I know. I, I'm just You're doing like, it. it's going to be janky. It'll be fun. I know. It's janky I'm, I'm doing it so I can... Not, I didn't realize it was just Kyle being like, I'm going to blame you for it being janky. It's theatrics. It's theatrics, you know? I got to keep the show alive. 
Um, pin my PC. All right. So the blatant ripoff segment of Matt Philly's uh, Pit My Setup. You can go check that out on Swatch and TV on YouTube. He does a really great show, but we're talking mo mainly about PCs here. Uh, so the first one comes from Garrett. Haberber. Haberber. Haberdasher. Garrett Haberdasher. Haberlava. Garrett Haberlava uh, sends in his rig. It looks like it's a Define so R4. i5 4590, B85 motherboard, 8 gigs of RAM, terabyte hard drive, GPU coming soon. So oh, no, that's a core. That's a core. Uh, no, that's not a core. It's a Corsair. What is it? R2200. R2, R2, it's R200. I mean. Yeah, you're probably right. It's one of those. So this is really nice. It's a really good budget case. It looks like this is quite a budget system. You got a 600 watt power supply in there, or that might be 500. I can't tell. Um, but it doesn't even look like you have a discrete card. He doesn't. He said GPU coming soon. Okay, GPU coming soon. That's cool. No worries. Um, you've also got a stock CPU cooler. So I hope CPU cooler is also coming soon. Um, yeah, I, I figure even in a budget build these days, you can pick up a, a Hyper Two Twelve Evo or something for like twenty, thirty bucks, and it's just a, it, it just goes so far, I, I guess, um, with like acoustics and performance and just pretty much in every realm that you can possibly think of for a CPU cooler. I think it's just a really good investment. So try picking one of those up, replacing that stock cooler. It'll be a lot quieter as well. Um, honestly, it's it's tough for me to recommend like. S nice sleep cables when it's a budget build like this because I feel like that should be reserved for like a, at least a mid tier to high end system but I feel like you're really um, trying to cut corners here and you're trying to um, save some cash so now this is a budget build I mean maybe in the future I, I'm glad you chose this one though Kyle because I I want I want to tell everyone right now if I may I know this is your segment but I like like this is a good build for me because you're working with what you got. This yeah, of is course. A, this is a B85 motherboard, so it's a less expensive motherboard. It's an i5-4590, so it's not a K-SKU. Yeah. Um, 8 gigs of RAM, terabyte hard drive, but, I mean, it looks pretty clean overall. Oh, it's definitely really um, solid. You, you, got, can... you got everything wired in there, and you have, you have my, one of my favorite things, which is an upgrade path. Yes. Um, you have a functional computer right now, and you have stuff that you can add on to it in the future. Um, to make it even better. So GPU coming soon, obviously. So yeah, don't don't worry about any of the aesthetics now until yeah. you get that graphics card in there. Exactly. I'd say GPU first. After that, SSD. Yes. Would be indeed. next for me. Um, then CPU cooler. You you might want to get the CPU cooler out of there. It's not an overclockable CPU though. It's a 4590. So true. Your main reason for getting that CPU it's cooler noise. out of there is going to be noise, and especially if it starts to to whine or whatever over time. But yeah, the uh, CPU cooler would be next on the list. And then beyond there, um, you know, if you want to start diving into aesthetics, cable extensions and that kind of thing, you can do that. But yeah, f focus on some of the performance uh, first. And, yeah, and definitely exactly. Dropping a graphics card in the system is going to make a very nice little very nice little gaming system. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you, Garrett. Good job, Garrett. Appreciate that. Very nice looking rig. Uh, next one comes from Raziel's. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, he says, love the show. I've got an i7-3770K, GTX 980, 840 Evo. This is uh, his after shot of cable management. Cable management does look pretty tidy here, uh, Raziel's. Uh, I'm digging it so far. Uh, I love how you, ha how you have that GTX 980 in there, the XFX power supply. Um, everything pretty much matches, uh, more or less, except for maybe the RAM. I think it looks a little purpley. I'm not too sure what color it is. It might be the lighting. Um, that is actually, yeah. It, right? Or, or it weird... could just be a, diff a really different shade of blue. It might be like some of that blue Kingston memory. Yeah. Uh, some older blue, Kingston blue memory. Can, blue can be weird with digital f photos. It I've, can. I've had that happen can. before. So you've got like maybe a really like dark blue, uh, royal blue versus a baby blue, sky blue on the motherboard. Mm. Um, but uh, I'm kind of curious why you have the CPU cooler mounted vertically and not horizontally. Could be maybe because of RAM clearance. Yeah. Um, but if not, I, I would suggest rotating it 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise just because your your fan isn't as suffocated when it's actually on the right side of the heat sink as opposed to on the bottom because you're kind of now sandwiching it between the heat sink and the video card um, and obviously your your video card is already giving off some uh, element of heat yeah so uh, if you get some more fresh airflow from the right side of the case where you have those two nice intake fans which i really like um, i think that could be a little bit better for your cpu um, again clearance 
clearance plays a big factor in it, obviously. Uh, but I do like how you have that intake fan at the bottom of your case as well. You're kind of really utilizing all the uh, different features and mounting points of your case. Uh, Blue, um, Blue Dreamer 980 is in chat right now, and he says this is his system, and he says it's Blue Kingston memory. So I think I know okay. what he's talking about. Oh, that's right. It's, it's not purple. It's probably just the shading here. It's and blue. It is, then, yeah. It's kind of a slightly lighter shade of blue. I think I yes. know the, the exact kit that you're using. I used to have that kit. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a good kit, I lost though. track of what you were saying for a second there, Kyle. But um, mm. it, there's some cable management that could that could definitely help out here. Yeah, um, I think with the optical, the, bottom, the five yeah. five and a quarter inch bay. Maybe if you like zip tie all those cables together to make them look mm -hmm. like one big cable, I think that would look a lot better. Um, again, this is a pretty budget system, I'd say. Well, I, I should say it's budget, though, because you have a 980 in there, and you that got a 3770K. So if you wanted to get some sleeve cables in there, um, what I'm curious to know is which case this is. I could not say, looking at it from the side, that's a, I really can't That tell. is a layout and design that I've seen used in quite a few cases. Yeah. Um, maybe a Cooler Master. Actually, those uh, drive bays look kind of similar. Oh, to it's Thermal Take. Oh, Thermal Take. It's definitely oh, okay. a thermal take case. Um, um, yeah. So but I'll sleeve it. Maybe all black. All black sleeving this would be one, sweet. This one also falls into a category for me, similar to the last case, the, the last, last system, that I just like because you got a 3770K. Granted, it's a, like slightly out of date, but still a very good processor. And drop a 980 on yeah. that. And I, this is probably a really nice gaming system. Oh, yeah. Uh, the budget cooler probably does a good job with overclocking. Uh, Hyper 212, I mean... You're you're getting you're getting 95, 90, 95 percent of the performance that you get with a fifty or even up to like eighty or hundred dollar cooler on there. Right. right. So you can probably overclock that CPU a pretty decent amount. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, granted, there's it's, again some aesthetic stuff that we that we mentioned, cable management and whatnot. Um, but overall, very nice system. Yeah. And I didn't notice. Did he say? Yeah, eight forty Evo. So you got an SSD in there. Yeah. As well. So yeah, nice nice build, Raziel. Raziel's. Raziel's Golden Warthog. Golden Warthog. That's much easier to pronounce um, somehow. Yeah, if you move on to like the aesthetics part of this, uh, the, the motherboard doesn't do it for me there. I yeah. Would say, I would say if you're getting, if you're moving on to like really, really making this more of a showpiece and, and that kind of thing, wait until you can upgrade your base platform. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe get something in the Sandy Bridge range because I'm um, Sandy Bridge, uh, Skylake, <laughs> Skylake range. Uh, because updating to a Skylake main uh, motherboard, ma RAM, and processor, and then you've still got a 980, which is you know got a plenty of life left on it. Yeah. Uh, and then you can maybe do some more stuff with the cable, cable fanciness and that kind of thing. Yeah. Thanks, Raziels. Thank you. So Appreciate much. it, buddy. Next, we've got cross chipping. Who sends a, sends in his rig? It's a uh, inside of a enclosed in a 750D. It's actually a very nice system. I don't a have too much to say here. Um, it's all very beautifully packaged. It looks like you've got some red LEDs in here, which is interesting because you don't have much red in the system itself other than those uh, those HyperX Savage SSDs that you've got in the back you're on there. The, you're on the Imgur link, right? Imgur, yeah. Right. But um, you've definitely taken a liking to Noctua fans, which I think is a great choice because they perform Ooh. awesomely if you can afford them. Man, uh, look at that SSD lineup. I know, right? Pretty savvy there. Um, and you've also got some killer... Crossfire uh, cards there, uh, the Sapphire. I don't know. It's probably what is it, what does it say they are? Two nineties, the the Tri X R nine two nineties. Very nice for four gigabytes of GDDR five. Two nineties or two ninety X? Two nineties. Okay. Um, very nice system. I think that there's plenty of room here. It doesn't feel too cramped. I think the seven fifty D is a great choice for this op for this case. And actually, with the with the lights on, it kind of like. I like it. I definitely like it better with the lights on than the lights off. As yeah. Far as the color scheme goes. It, it right. kind of almost like almost blends the, the colors. Noct the Noctua fans with the rest of the system. Yeah. Um, I agree. But this is beastly. I I I gotta say, after being inundated with all-in-one coolers, all-in-one liquid coolers for quite some time, seeing the big fat uh, Noctua air coolers, I am kind of like, yeah, like yeah. That, that's that's probably yeah. an awesome setup. Your crossfire configuration probably does a really great job. That SSD array, I'm impressed with. Yep. Um, you have four. I don't know their capacities or... Oh, they're listed down there at the bottom. Oh, they're four. They're all 240-gig SSDs, so you got a terabyte of SSD storage in there. That's good. And I like how they're arrayed, so you can you can see them all very nicely. Yeah. Um, there's an optical drive. Just 
just to mention it. Here, um, here would be this would be a, um, I guess an ambitious suggestion for me. If you were to, because what's really killing it for me is your PCIe cables and the 24 pin. Yeah. If you were to go to like mainframecustoms.com, shameless plug, those guys mm -hmm. are awesome though, um, and get some really nice the Telio mainframe, sleeving. Mainframecustom.com. Mainframe custom. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, go to their website and look up whatever Telio sleeving or any other kind of high end sleeving options that they carry and maybe get something that's like along the lines of the Noctua brown slash tan and the sapphire tri cooler blue like i almost feel like if you could get like a nice tan brown and blue in there it would be really different but i think that would be different i i don't know it it doesn't kill it for me like this color scheme right here like the the brown and blue i think you could pull it off somehow with the lights too though you think those, see the, those... the lights. The lights. See if he went with the sleeving, yeah. the lights would have to be changed. You'd have to do something. You would have to. You have to make the the, the, the lights either white or yeah. or blue, I think. But um, I think it. I don't know. I'm always I'm always a sucker for uh, builds that can be aesthetically pleasing with Noctua fans in them. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. If you have a, if you have a system and you have Noctua fans in there and they match everything and, and they don't stand out and they don't look hideous, then you. I am a huge. I, I pop a, a nerd boner. Then for you it. have spent a lot of time making your system match with Noctua fans. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So uh, yeah. thank you, Cross Shipping, for sending that in. Looks really nice. Good luck on the uh, the rest of it. Uh, next comes from Josh. Josh, what do we got, Josh? So he's got a. Core i5, 4690K at 4 gigahertz, Corsair H80 cooler, HyperX DDR3, he's got uh, 8 gigs of RAM there, he's got a GTX 980 Ti, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, uh, 1 terabyte WD green, 120 gigabyte Samsung Evo 850, beautiful, and a 256 gig Crucial SSD, uh, CX750M PSU from Corsair, um, all inside of an H440 from NZXT. Great case. Uh, I think your internals are pretty clean for the most part. I think where you could really use some improvement, excuse me, is with the cables coming off of your CPU block, uh, the, the water block, um, as well as that other cable that's kind of to the left of it. Uh, it just looks like they're all kind of racing to that upper grommet that's above your motherboard. And I think you could really consolidate them by zip tying them together uh, just making them a bit more tidy. Also, there's a, a four-pin fan cable that's plugged into the header just to the right, just just above your 24-pin ATX that I think is just going a little bit too far off, and it's a little too wavy and wacky for me. You can actually um, go uh, behind the motherboard with that, although you might have to remove your top right motherboard standoff. Yeah. And, like, you can lift the board up just enough to slide the cable back under there. And screw it back in. And then uh, that'll that'll tuck that away without really with a minimal amount of effort. Yeah. Um, this is not a very wide shot, so it's hard to say what else is going on here. Um, but, but I mean, I think, I think everything Kyle said already was, was has been pretty accurate. And also, I think he has the same Kingston RAM as we were looking at earlier, where it's like not really that shade of baby blue. Yeah, it's a little bit more purpley. Uh, I think I see what you're talking about. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe getting like some Corsair Vengeance RAM that has that really like nice blue that matches. The MSI and the uh, and the actually the course the the blue ring on the Corsair fan is what doesn't match to me because the, the oh memory, yeah you're right the memory of the PCI slot and the NZXT logo on the power supply cover somewhat yeah kind of match at least more so to me than the lighter color of the yeah on the Corsair fan yeah it um, looks like you've got more of a baby blue on the Corsair fan and just like a pure blue on the motherboard and and, and the case. Um, so if you wanted to spray paint that ring... Yeah, you could pop the ring off and do a quick paint job on it, and that might tie things together a little bit more. But well, I would only bother doing that if you're also going to do something with the cable sleeving. Yes. Uh, or, or extensions. Yeah. Um, cause go also, big or go home. You've got the... Man, it's, it's just so many people out there with, with like, uh, probably what is a very nice and well and functional power supply. Oh, yeah. With, with just that burst of color at the end of the cable. Yeah. Um, My yeah. pet peeve. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Uh, Nocturne Kitty is our next entry. Oh, yeah. 
Good old Nocturne Kitty. Hey, Angela. Angela, if you're in here right now. She was in th chat earlier. Thanks I for sending this in. Oh, very nice. She's been working on her build for quite some time now, and she's finally got it up and running. She modded it, too. Uh, she modded it, too. She did some really nice mods. She, got a, she had a jigsaw up in there. Jigsaw. Uh, she's got a really nice um, decal on the she's side panel, so which I think is beautiful. It matches the crate motherboard that she's got from MSI in there. Um, a beautiful, nice little uh, compact sapphire card. I don't know if that's the... I need to give p people better pictures. I can't remember which card oh she's God, using there. Too big. But um, overall, a really nice build. Honestly, I think the, uh, the H100i GTX is doing you really well in the system. I think uh, I, I'm really loving those threaded tubes that are, that are coming off of it. Um, you've even taken the time to get some black slaving extensions. Or actually, those are just from your, from your power supply in general. Your whole power supply is completely sleeved in black, and I think that's really clean looking. Uh, you're going with the black and white theme, obviously, and you've got are some you, really are nice. Are you on Imager as well? Mm, no, I'm just on straight up Twitter oh, for this okay. one. But yeah, I mean, you got some nice Bit Phoenix fans with fan grills. I think the fan grills look pretty sweet. I do. Um, cable management is awesome. I mean, yeah. looking at the back of your system, did you see the the picture of the back? Uh, this one. Super clean. Yeah. Very well done. Um, Very clean. Everything's tucked away. Everything's tucked away, so you don't see anything she, peering out from she behind put, the motherboard tray. She she paid a lot more attention to the eight pin CPU than I've than I've ever <laughs> paid attention to it. She's got one, there's, two, three. Yeah, there's three uh, little sticky cable, cable tie cable tie downs that she popped on there. Yeah. Very nice. So this is an AMD build. I like the uh, Create Edition extra sticker that was put on there. I it's, think it's a nice touch. It makes did, it very personal. Did Reischer send that over? I thought about that. I don't know. He might have. Reischer prints stickers in their. Oh, Kitty's suit. in chat. Hey, Kitty. Kitty, did who? who Where would you get your decal? Oh, she has a PC part picker list as well. Nice. I can click on that. PC part picker. Da, 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 so this da, is an eighty-three seventy four gigahertz H one ten i MSI nine seventy a Create Edition. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2x4 gig AMD memory kit. And we got a 270X in there. Uh, 270X graphics card, Very MX200, nice. 250 gig SSD, a 750 gig hard drive. Right, you said uh, not me. <laughs> that's a Fractal Core 3500 okay. case and a Bit Phoenix. Oh, that's why the power supply looks so nice. It's a Bit Phoenix Fury 750 watt. I have worked with that one. It's a nice and power supply. If you're looking for just like all the, if you guys watch the Pimp My PC segments here, and we rail on power supplies with like just the standard cables and, and the color. The Bit Phoenix with the sleeved the pre sleeved cables. It's pretty freaking nice. It looks nice. really nice. I mean, for just an out of the box experience, it's not even that much more expensive than typical power supplies either. So yeah, like keep that one in mind, guys. It, it makes sense it, because yeah. Bit Phoenix has their own line of sleeved cables. So for it them does. to incorporate that and to implement that on their you know power supplies, mm -hmm. you know, out of the box is really nice. It's a really nice touch. It saves you a lot of time and money. Um, as well, so all altogether a really nice system, Angela. I, I'm really liking it. It's beautiful. I, uh, I I hope to see it in person one day. That'd be cool. I think she's bringing it to uh, QuakeCon. Yeah, I think that's what right. she was prepping it for. So. All right. Have fun at QuakeCon, Angela. Yes, indeed. Uh, next one we've got is from Nathan. We'll do a couple more here. Uh, let's just plow through these because we've uh, we're, we're kind of nearing in the hour mark here yeah. um, again we got another black and white color schemed rig I think this is also has a lot of potential again uh, with the cable situation those ketchup and mustard cables are not doing much for your color scheme overall I, I really love the Corsair Vengeance um, dims that you have in there I think it matches beautifully with the Asus motherboard that you have um, oh, they do. Also, the that GTX 980 is just freaking sexy as hell. I mean, I, this just that that top upper that second quadrant of your system is just super sexy. Um, I really like it a lot. I think sleeving could be much improved. Uh, and you've kind of got a lot of going lot going on. The ketchup and mustard with the flat cables, uh, your PCIe. Um, just just get some nice ass black and white cables. Maybe just black. Maybe just white. Why are there two um, Xbox 360s? Mm, there's two Xbox 360s. Oh, wait. In the picture with this cable management, there's two Xbox 360s. He's right just there. using them as coasters, probably. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Because that's what they're, they're meant just, for. I just, I'm just confused. You, you stay down there, uh, Xbox so he, One. He's got some white LED lighting, uh, which is almost 100% provided by LED fans. I, I also um, like that a lot. 
I like it, but, but it's a little it dim. seems limited. Yeah, um, the fans are lighting true. the fans up and a bit of the area around them, but there's a lot of darkness elsewhere in the case. Yeah. Granted, maybe that's how you want it. But, um, I mean, like Kyle said, that, that top quadrant of your, of your system looks very nice, so maybe... Uh, Be good to show it off. Maybe plopping one or two more white LED strips yep. uh, might brighten things up a bit, and you've got a side panel window and everything, too. Yep. Um, actually, Bit Phoenix has uh, magnetic, little shorty magnetic LED strips, and they're actually just, they're finally going to be available, I think, this month. Yeah. Um, super easy because they're just magnets, so you can just stick them wherever you want. Yeah, as long they as you've don't got a steel peel case, off of or anything like that. Yeah, they don't peel off. They don't like the adhesive doesn't wear out when the system gets warm over time or anything, and they have a longer cable on them. So, uh, investing in one or two of those would be a great way. Like you know, just, I agree. And and I like that you can kind of position them where you want. And if it's not exactly perfect, you just go in there and move slide it over, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Nathan. Super sweet. Appreciate that, sir. Uh, next up, we've got we got two more here. We've got Paul. Paul. This is a different Paul. No, oh, not me. I submitted no, mine. No, you last you week. did submit yours earlier so uh we got another 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 paul there's more of you god help us we're all over the place <laughs> um so you've got this uh raid max case which i'm not a huge fan of raid max i know they're like very budget oriented um looks like you have a micro etx motherboard in here so you got you suffer somewhat from motherboard dwarfism in your case where it looks like your motherboard's just being eaten by your case it looks really tiny um but altogether i think there's potential here again uh, with the stock AMD CPU cooler, I think maybe you could... I mean, I, I hated mine. I, I put mine originally on the console overkiller that I did about the, a month or two ago, and it was so noisy. Yeah, they're pretty... Um, even just barely under load, it would just get so noisy. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Um, so I don't know. If, if you're used to it by now, then I guess that's fine. But uh, even from an aesthetic standpoint, if you want to improve acoustics while... Having your case, uh, your, your overall system look a bit better, I think you could maybe put a, a small tower in there. Um, I think that uh, you've done a nice job with... I, I don't know, is, is the inside of this... There, why are there clips on the front of the case? Clips? Yeah. This? No, no, no. Right here. Oh, there's it's like little paper clip like thingies. Clips. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know what those are there for. Are they holding it on? Maybe the front, maybe the front grill, like a, no, like um, dust filter broke at some point. Maybe. maybe it's just for filing. Maybe or maybe his paperclip holder broke. Why are you broke. yawning? You're only supposed to get tired or bored in my half of the show. No, nah, that <laughs> bored me long ago. So. Okay. Um, it's just residual. <laughs> that's um, right. All right. So cable management. Obviously, I think it's it, this boils down to the case. I think if you had a better case, a little bit more high end you'd have more grommets available at your disposal that you could route these cables into, especially like your the ones at the bottom of your motherboard, the front panel connectors. They're all forced to kind of route to the right of your motherboard, and I think usually if you buy a, a slightly higher-end case, you'll have some grommets just below your motherboard where you can route those through a little bit more stealthily um, and it, f to provide an overall cleaner look. Um, I think the, the weakest link here is the case. And honestly, if, if, if I'm speaking honestly, I would probably go for like a micro ATX case that's a little bit more durable than something from Raid Max. Um, like the N2 Evolve, for example. That'd be a good one. It's a great micro ATX case. It's good for water cooling, obviously, but also good for air cooling. Um, and I think it would, like something like this would look really nice inside of it. Obviously a lot more better, uh, or more better. You said more better. I know. I corrected myself those though. Those I fixed. Words. I corrected myself. Um, much better cable routing options, but that's pretty much all I have to say. Nice video card. I like the WinForce. The, the little uh, WinForce 750 Ti. Yeah, I'm trying to find if Johnny Guru has has reviewed this power supply. Um, so Raid Max, in my experience, uh, as far as power supplies, they they don't have the best reputation. They yeah they, tend to uh, fail. Yeah, which, but I mean, not all fail. They th maybe have a higher failure rate than others. They tend to fail. If you've been using it, <clears throat> and you've been using it for a long time, and it's been okay for you, then good. Yeah. Um, I don't know, this is another... Inter inter I like some of the ones you've, you've been choosing, Kyle, because they're interesting to me. Because this, yeah. is, this to me, this is like a budget build. Yeah, But you can is. tell he's put a lot of time and effort into kind of making things pretty and everything. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you on upgrading the case. 
What? Yeah. Because he's got a 5800K, an A75 motherboard, and an R7260X. The case is functional. The case gets its job done. And it doesn't even look that bad. I would say to upgrade core components first before doing the case. Like but, the video card? Uh, like the video card or maybe the, the core platform. I mean, a 5800K is not too out of date, but um, it's definitely not the high end when it comes to CPU processing or anything like that. But I like, I like that there's a lot of love that's been put into this build, um, even though you're working with, with more budget range parts. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I bet it's a nice little performer, too. Actually, is there an SSD in there? That's what I'd say. Get a freaking SSD. Probably not. Get yeah. an SSD. Get an SSD. That will that will change a everything. Lot. Okay. Change your life. Okay, one more. Last one comes from Joker oh, from yeah. Joker Productions. Uh, this guy he runs a YouTube channel. Joker Slunt. Uh, he does some really good videos. I've seen some of his videos, particularly I enjoyed the ones that he talked about uh, about The Witcher Three <laughs> and that whole debacle with Nvidia, GameWorks, and whatnot, and hair works. Debacle. Oh, sure it was. A terrible debacle. Um, right, so, but uh, he sends in his rig in a Define R5. Very beautiful. A Define R5 black and white build. Black and white. I have a, it's gorgeous. I have, I have a high standard for Define R5 black and white builds. Uh, Define S is... Yeah, that's where it's at, really. Define S is... Come on. It's for cheapskates and <laughs> poor people. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it cheap? Right, so B... Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, wait, did he did he list specs or specs on here anywhere? Um, no, but I mean we can kind of guess. These are nine eighties, I think. Nine ninety Ti's maybe. Yeah, it's a SLI Either configuration one. though. Either or. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's an X ninety nine board. Yes, I can see the other sticks on the other side of the um, be quite yeah, cooler. Yeah, because it's quad channel memory. Dark Rock uh, Pro, very good cooler. Very good cooler. Uh, the vertical orientation is the only thing that sticks out to me. Yes. Granted, you might not be able to rotate that 90 degrees. Yes. But that would be something that I would consider doing. Right. Um, it's probably not even that bad the way it is. Uh, just um, as long as he's got it in pull and not push. Yeah. I as think long, as, 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 as it's, it's going, going towards up. the exhaust outlets at the top of your case, you're good. If it's going down, then that's bad. I mean, you got to work with what you got. But honestly, like, damn, what a great... If you're going to put a cooler on its side, a CPU cooler on its side, what a great option because you've got the Be Quiet branding. Oh, yeah. That's, like, perfectly situated. And it's actually... And it's a very nice-looking cooler mounted either way. Um, right. I, I love Be that, Quiet. That might coolers. even have been his motivation I, I have one for doing that. I have a, uh, the same cooler right there. It's, it's gorgeous. I, I want one of those. <laughs> But um, still, I love your. I still have I'm like short on air coolers. I have like one or two. They're handy. And, I will yeah. say they're handy. Yeah. Sometimes you have too many AIOs, right? Which is weird because they're more expensive. Yeah. Um, but uh, all in all, I really like your sleeving Joker. I think it's kind of messy, but almost like intentionally. Yeah. Um, the sleeving it, is pretty. Um, I. It doesn't look messy. It looks like nice messy. I will say yeah. that at least like in this picture here, the some of the stuff kind of peeking out from behind that motherboard tray could maybe be wrangled back a bit more over here this stuff right in here oh yeah i agree um, the other picture you can you can it's it's a lot more visible yes i agree um, yes that's taboo for me and uh personally. i i would suggest taming that those extra loops that you got going on um yeah by the gpu because those just like I mean, you've, you've got the inline, like, a, a 6 and a 6 or whatever, and there's yeah, yeah. an extra loop there. Right. Wrap those up with a zip tie or something like that. I think that will smooth things out just a little bit. I agree yeah. with Kyle. The, the kind of, it's a little bit more free form as far as the cable management goes, and it's all very beautiful white cable extensions for your EVGA Supernova, Supernova power supply. Yeah. Um, it just, it, I feel like it could be streamlined, just, just a touch. Yeah. To, yeah, to kind of to kind of smooth that. things out. But other than that, I mean, overall, I mean, it's 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 a beautiful build. It the, is. The black and white looks great. Um, I even like that you have just a single hint of color in the GTX logos. Yeah. On the reference. And it's not clashing start. with anything. Doesn't clash. That's that's looks the great. only. That's what I see a lot of is the green yeah. clashes with some other thing in the system. But this doesn't because everything else is so neutral with the black and white mm -hmm. that this almost shines really beautifully. It's a nice little pop of color. It is. All right. It is. Very nice, Joker. Thank you much. Beautiful build. Thank you much, sir. Thanks and I think that pretty much concludes Pin My PC. Thank you all for sending your pictures in. I really enjoy seeing them. Uh, so does Paul. 
Um, but I think that leaves us to Q and A. So if you guys want to have, uh, if you guys want to ask Paul or I any five deep personal Q&A. questions, we have five minutes. <laughs> blitz round. We'll do a blitz Q and A. So we'll uh, blitz, blitz, blitz. We'll look. We'll look at Twitter right now. If you guys are on the Twitters, send your questions. Send us them there, or uh, post the questions in the chat room. I'm just gonna answer like the first thing that comes to my mind, like really quick, snappy yeah, we're stuff. Gonna, we're gonna give zero thought to our. What responses. size H uh, hard drive would you recommend for HTPC using a Seton Infinity? Six cable tuner. Would you recommend an SSD for boot OS? Yes. Get a 120 gig um, SSD for boot and get I don't know. 120 just, minimum. 120 Depends minimum. What else you're doing with it? 120 minimum and at least a two terabyte for for. I would media. say a two terabyte WD red. Get a red. Um, because you're, you'll have it all on all yeah, the time. Yeah, you're installing it in an HTPC. The HTPC is going to be on all the time. It's going to be writing to that drive very constantly. So don't cheap out and get a blue drive or a green drive or the Seagate equivalents of whatever the Seagate equivalents of those are. Go red. Get, get a NAS drive or, or get an enterprise drive Nasty. because, it, I mean, it's not the end of the world. If the drive crashes, you lose your, I mean, as long as you all, all you have on there is TV or something like that. Right. But um, yeah, that drive is going to get worked a lot harder than, than your typical desktop and you will want it to be Z- stronger. Zulu Joe Mama, favorite brand of ketchup? Go, uh, Heinz. I know uh, it's typical, but yeah, they, they, they do it well. I like the organic ketchup, actually. We're getting what are, organic, and it, it's, it's mm, very nice. I need to try a new organic um, one, because the one I have is really sweet, and I hate Geek it. Geek Decast, copper or hardline tubing? Or copper? What? They're both oh, hardline. Oh, he's saying copper as hardline tubing. Yeah, why not? I'm going to rephrase his question, though, and say copper for hardline tubing. Copper or acrylic PTG? What do you like better? It depends. Oh, what do I like better? Yeah. Oh, man. It's it's tough. Seen. It depends on the theme. I've seen some really nice copper tubing that really matches the like the steampunk vibe or yeah. whatever. And you can't you can't really emulate that with, with a, you know, PTG. Oh. Um, shit. They both look really nice. I, you know, I, I, have to, I have to say copper. Copper? Copper, because they're pipes. They're supposed to be hard-lined. <laughs> the the PTG true. shit, I mean, it looks like it's been bent. That is true. The copper shit, it just looks like, it looks like freaking plumbing, but it's in the PC. It looks freaking amazing. Oh, this I've thing. always loved PC copper type shit. That's a beautiful rig, too. I saw so, that earlier uh, from Bill. Bill Owen from MMPC Tech uh, shared this earlier. Hold on, hold on. Uh, what model of the ROG laptops are you using? Is a G G550 G550JK. G550 JK. That's right. Um, hundred. Okay, I want to show this build real quick. Okay. Uh, this is so Bill Owen from MNPC Tech posted this. This is called uh, Purpura, and it is by Elaine Simples. A L A I N. Somebody's calling me from Norwalk. Norwalk. I don't know if I should answer. Answer it. I'm just gonna tell him. Tell him. Hello, you're live. 300 people are watching you. Yeah, this is Paul. We're live. We're we're live streaming right now, and you are you are now live streaming on our live show. Speakerphone, speakerphone. speakerphone. Yes. <laughs> that's okay. Speakerphone. That's okay. Well then. Sure. Who is this? Oh, it's Elric. I'm sorry. Didn't even know that. It's Elric from Tech Up Tomorrow, guys. Hey! Everyone say hi to Elric. Hey, put him on speakerphone. Do you want to? Do you want to talk to people? Ask him if he's cool to be on speakerphone. Why doesn't Elric call me? I can put you on speakerphone. What's his problem? Dick. All right, all right hold on. Tell hold him on. he's a dick. Don't be mean. To... <laughs> Elric, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right, everyone. Everyone, say what's up to Elric. What's up, brother? What's going on, everybody? Not much. But you won't be able to hear everyone else because they're just in chat, so... They... <laughs> but yeah, everyone say what's up. How is your live stream doing? It's doing pretty good. We're, uh, we, we're just at the very tail end of it, though. We're, uh, we're just wrapping up Kyle's half of the show. Oh, really? Hey, Kyle. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Dude, it's been a long time. How you been? I've been good. Everything awesome over there for you, Mr. Awesome Sauce? Absolutely, man. It's always. always awesome sauce. It's always awesome. Got to keep the sauce jiving. I like to dip all my chicken in awesome sauce before I eat it. Ooh. 
That's the best. You, you owe me like 5% royalty for, <laughs> for all that awesome sauce you've been eating. You go through it. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a check. Oh, I know you're good nice. for it. Never had a doubt. <laughs> nice. Hey, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't kept up, so do you guys still work for your wig at all or no? No, not right now. We're we're both we we're both uh, have gone our separate ways for the time being. We're we're still friendly with them though. That's cool. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are, are doing are doing well on your own. Uh, how about how about Joanne? She's long gone from there too, huh? Uh yeah, Joanne's got her own channel too, uh, Joanne Tech Lover, and uh, she has a couple other offshoot channels. She has one where she posts cute pictures of animals. And yeah, we're all in the wrong industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever Joanne's doing, we should hop on board that yeah, shit right I now. I agree. I agree. She's got it. Ground floor why, on that one. Why is she? Why is she? Is she getting rich off, off little animal pictures or what? I, I can't imagine anything less. Possibly. I mean, <laughs> let's assume she must be raking it, in it, the it, cash. It is the internet. <laughs> oh my god, man. So yeah, I'll ask a question. Well, you guys can answer my question to me live if you want. So check it out. Well, you guys know that most of the time, like I have my friend who, who manages my site all the time for me, right? Okay. So yeah. I went, I went into, I went into my, into my analytics on my site. And there's like, there's like things called an earnings report, an estimated earnings, and then an ad performance. Now, the estimated earnings has one number, but the ad performance has another. I know you guys do your channels too. So is, is the ad performance number, is that an actual number of money that came through? Or is that just some odd number that's a good question yeah. um yeah because if you go in and you look there's like estimated earnings and then estimated earnings has a, has a number but then if you go to ad performance it has a total different number huh that's so like much, much more than the estimated earnings so i thought you guys might know because you guys run your own channels too so. i mean do you think it's i mean how much more is it do you know well, sure. I'll, be, I'll let you guys know. Like the estimated, the, the estimated earnings is like thirteen hundred bucks, and the ad performance number is like almost at three thousand dollars. Oh, okay. And then, then down below it shows geography. It's the gross revenue. Do, do you think? Do, do you think it has anything yeah. to do with like you know the the ad the ad revenue is like what you'd be getting like net, but then the estimated earnings is what you get after Google takes their cut. From the yeah. ad, the ad revenue. I think that would be my guess because would, they take yeah. a pretty sizable amount. Google takes forty five percent. Right. So um, that would be about the right amount. So it's probably telling you the overall amount that the ads are earning from it, and then it's telling you what you're actually getting versus uh, the full amount that before Google takes its money out. Uh, you're right. I just, I, I just did the numbers. It's forty five percent difference. Oh, there you go. Problem uh, solved. Uh, there it is. Beautiful. Yeah, see, I, I never, I never saw that part before. I saw it. I was like, well, what exactly is this number? Then? What does this number mean? Yeah, <laughs> Go Google is not screwing you, Elric. It's screwing all of us. <laughs> Every I single one of us. I, I feel honestly that the YouTube by itself is almost no money whatsoever. That without having ad sponsors, it's like almost impossible to make it. I agree. Yeah. No, there's, there's no way that uh, any of us could live off of just YouTube ad revenue. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I'll let you. It'll be hard. This is making money. I haven't actually had any food money of my own for my channel in the past six months. Oh, God. I haven't had any food money. Everything that I've gotten has been through me hustling for my music channel and selling music gear and selling my songs. Yeah. That's the only way I've been able to eat. Doing That's... tech stuff has, has, has no longer, is like for me anyways, because I, I guess because I got sick for a long time, it's no longer really oh, a, yeah. a viable option for finance. Well, yeah, I mean, have you have you watched our stream lately? We've been living off of beer, and, <laughs> and, uh, and that's, that's it. Basically beer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Beer. <laughs> well, I'm diabetic, so if I lived on beer, I'd probably die or that could cut off a little limb. Yeah, yeah don't you, do that. You don't want to do that. Don't do that. Nobody wants that, Albert. No. <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to make plenty more cut off limbs, so. But. <laughs> I see you guys always work with, 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 with Jay. How's that, how's that guy doing? It's, 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 I don't really know him, but, but and, like everybody always tells me, like, yeah, we we hang out with him a lot. I don't know that we've ever talked about you with him. So, um, but but I'll 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 ask him next time I get a chance and make sure you guys are you guys are cool. That's good. 
Actually, yeah, totally Log Logan has been using a plugin now uh, for his browser that br pretty much uh, turns off YouTube comments, and he says it's fantastic. What do you mean? So the, like, his channel doesn't, just doesn't get him anymore? No, they're still there. They, you, just, you just don't see them. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> but I feel like you could just not look at them. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends. But uh, hey, Eric. Yeah, some people, some people, some people, are you guys going to finish your show? I wish you guys the absolute best. Uh, make sure you guys pay attention to, to, uh, to Paul's hard work, Mr. Awesome Soft Services. They're awesome guys. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Eric. man. Good hearing oh, from you, brother. If you, guys, if, you, if you guys are ever around or anything or want to get together and hang out, let me know. I'd be totally down with coming to lunch and, and also meet, meeting that guy from, from Jay's Two Cents. So uh, it'd be awesome. So love you guys and take care of the. Let's keep in contact. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, for sure. Thanks. Will do, man. Have a great show, you guys. Later, Eric. Later. Bye bye. All right. Guys, that was Elric. Um, wow. If you want to check out any of his stuff, it's on Tech of Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. What are, what are the he's, odds we get a phone call from I, another tech tuber on our stream? That's random. That's, well, it's happened before, but usually they're watching the stream. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is completely coincidental. Right. But, uh, yeah, go ahead and check Elric out. And I think that's pretty much going to conclude this show because we've been uh, rambling on long enough. We're trying to be respectful of your time as well. But thank you guys for so much for tuning in. Um, this has been a fun show, nonetheless. I've had a, I've had a great time. Me too, me too. And we are going to be playing some video games later tonight as well, we so should, stay tuned for that. We hey! Should, we should do one last Johnson check. One last Johnson check. Johnson! Johnson! Damn, who, who is this lucky soul? Zach! Holy. Is this the same Zach? Uh, oh, same Zach. Zach Lund. <laughs> Zach Lund. Yes, we had Zachs on both, so he Zach... Zach, you get a quad. You get a quad, Johnson. And you just bought the last of my shirts for the uh, the, vo the void my warranty shirts. Oh, nice! You bought the very last one. And those those are a limited edition too. They right? are. They will not be back in stock. Beautiful. So. Congratulations, Zach. And how many Johnsons you got lined well, up? I got lots of Johnsons. Johnson, 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 Johnson. I, got, Johnson. I think six. Nice. Beautiful. So shout out nice. again to Giuseppe, Edward, Jeffrey, Mason, Cody, and Zach. Hey, you guys are fantastic. Johnson, Johnson. Hey. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay tuned. If you guys are uh, night owls out there, we will be streaming later tonight uh, on our respective Twitch channels. Awesome Sauce Network. Paul's Hardware. Paul's Hardware. Be sure to check us out. And uh, if, if not, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Have a good one. Good night. Click the button. We love you. Where'd it go? Goodbye. <laughs>